what shocked me actually was that people in the ruling party were not even holding themselves back in the kind of genocidal language that we are, they were deploying in the build-up to the election. And I will mention names. Bayo Onanuga was a leading proponent of that. This guy went to Rwanda and saw what happened in Rwanda and came back and was posting on X Twitter using damning genocidal language, which is unforgivable after what happened in Rwanda. Okay? And so many other people. Well, MC Oluomo, it, it, all these things are captured on video. They, are, they happen before our very own eyes. Okay? And these are the kind of things that their followers will latch onto and then go on a killing spree. And then we'll get into an inter-tribal bloodletting and then that could, before we know what is that, that could lead to genocide. So these are the things that educated people, uh, you know, and uh, well, anyway, educated people have always, uh, education has nothing to do with it. People, uh, socio sociopaths will always go to for the juggler when it comes to genocide, uh, or, you know, uh, propagating uh, genocidal language. We saw everywhere genocide has happened, we see the educated elite goading the people on to kill and massacre. If you see the kind of people that we are uh, tried in Arusha, Tanzania, the people that were the radio call the Colinas, they were not uneducated. These people were well-trained journalists who were peddling genocidal language and urging Hutus to slaughter their Hutu wives and kids and neighbors. Uh, you saw it even uh, when Hitler was killing Jews in Germany. Many, many of the guys that propagated even a made a philosopher, one of the brightest minds in Western philosophical pantheons, Martin Heidegger, joined the Nazis, propounding genocidal language. So we, well, it doesn't have to do with the educational level that has nothing to do with it. We see that across board. But it's unfortunate that we have not learned anything from history. Uh, and Nigeria, and anyone that has known Nigeria will know that Nigeria is a tinderbox. The only thing that it requires to set that country ablaze are just a few misplaced words, and then the country will burn. It's still an amalgam. And then you, you see people supporting and peddling those things because uh, they want power. Power is simply opinion. If you, anybody who is uh, familiar with the philosophies of David Hume will let you know. You know, when the people say that there is power, that there is power. If people say, we don't believe in what you, pro pro you know, propound as power, you don't have any power. But our people are ready to kill and die for something that brings nothing at the end of the day. So that is, it's just unfortunate. I don't think that Nigerians are learning any lessons because genocide, as I'm talking to you, is still ongoing. They've been with Plateau. The Fulani headsmen are still massacring communities in just Plateau. Bokos University was sacked the other day. Okay, headsmen, you know, uh, they call themselves headsmen, but they are armed to the teeth. And a lot of people will sit down here and argue that it's because of the effects of global warming. No, there are ideologies behind it. There are cultural, there are religious, uh, 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 you know, triggers to it. So it's still ongoing and the Nigerian government has been either unable or unwilling to do something to arrest that tide. People are dying every day. The governors in Plateau and in Benue State will tell you that. Though, you know, it's, uh, I, I, I can't even grapple what is, you know, uh, with, the, with, the, with the idea that two consequent admin administrations in Nigeria have sat upon this genus, ongoing genocide and have done nothing. Buhari government, Buhari's government didn't do anything. Now Tinubu's government has given much in orders to his generals, but till this moment, nothing concrete has been achieved in that regard. So people are dying. The insecurity in Nigeria has topped uh, levels that we have not seen in, in recent memory. So, and um, yeah, what lessons are we to learn? The lessons we need to learn is that uh, if we don't take care the words we use in addressing each other. If we start dehumanizing each other, genocide is just the last point of it. 